Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and we are going to make a gorgeous but simple leather knife sheath. In fact, that's the key word here, simple, because there are all manner of shape, style, and design of sheath out there. But what we're going to do, pick up a couple of easy tricks, and at that point, you can make a sheath for any blade out there. Secondly, for our blacksmiths, their biggest problem is finding a sheath to match the blade they've made. You know what? Let's take that off the table and make our own, because our sheath, that's half the first impression of our knife. And if we make our own sheath, you are going to have a winning combination. Now, anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com or check below. We've got links that are going to take you straight to our website. So, first step with any project is our pattern. So let's step over here and knock together a clean, tight pattern for our blade. Now, with a sheath, this can be confusing because sword and dagger is actually on the opposite side. So for a sword, right hand draw, left hand side. But for knife and gun, right hand draw, right hand side. Now that brings up a little confusion, but the way we're going to mark our pattern, it's not going to be an issue. Now, on my right side, I want my cutting edge facing backwards and I want my spine forward. Now on this knife, this was given to me by a good friend, it's a fighting knife, so I have edge on both sides. But for the video, Let's just consider this back side as our spine, and this is our cutting edge. So I want that on my right side facing back, but also too, I want my top grain outside. Now for two reasons. Aesthetically, that looks great to me. But secondly, if I want to seal that, really want to put on a good top coat, I want to go to top grain instead of sky, all right? So let's take our knife, and I'm going to take my edge and point that towards me, and you'll see where I'm going with that. It sounds very confusing at this point, but again, we'll mark our patterns. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so let's drop our knife in, and I'm gonna bring this down to about three quarters of an inch from our end. In fact, you're gonna hear me say about several times because nothing here has to be spot on accurate measurements, okay? So center my handle right on my, my center line, and let's draw this in. Now, we're using copy paper, by no means great pattern material. But if I make a major mistake, I wad it up, throw it away. If I don't, and we have a good pattern here, I'll transfer this over to our plastic sheeting, which makes a great pattern material, okay? So we've got that down. Now let's do this. I'm going to square on my guard so that everything here is very square, all right? Square across my center line. There we go. Got a good throat on that. Now, on this end, we're going to add a welt which is simply a spacer. Now, all kinds of sheaths out there. We could actually just have one, one sewn edge where it loops around and comes back. But to me, I love the look of a stitch line on both sides. That's a nice finished edge. So therefore, my point is that we're going to add 3 eighths of an inch all the way around our blade. And I've got my, there we go, got my wing divider set for 3 eighths. So I'm going to simply follow this line but scribe with this now that's going to be hard for the camera to see, but what I'll do is I'll trace that in in pen so we can see it. And there we go. Okay, now I'm not comfortable drawing in my, my round end punch. At our shop, we've got all kinds of bottle caps and lids and whatnot that'll make a good template. But I'm going to jump over here to just a round hole template, and I'm going to find roughly a hole. Let's see, there's one inch a little too tight, so let's come up. There we go. That'll fit in nicely. All right, let's just draw that in. Cool. Now, when we cut this with the leather, we're going to make small cuts, and we'll do that with the pattern, but we're going to sand this. So that if that's not spot on, we're fine. Okay. Now, three-eighths of an inch, because we're going to come in one-eighth of an inch for our stitch line. Then that gives us a quarter of an inch, but we're actually going to cut our, our welt, and you'll see with that very shortly. We're kind of going to cut our welt a little bit wider so our knife blade actually sits in there comfortably and it's not too tight, okay? So with that, cool, we're ready to go on that portion of our sheath. Now let's jump up to our strap. Again, all kinds of ways we can go with this. We can actually flip this around so top grains out, but then we've got to skive it, we've got to work it down in there. Let's don't do that. Let's just keep it easy for this point. Now, one and a quarter inch wide to me, that's a good width. One, a little too thin, one and a half, a little too wide. So, one and a half inch strap, I'm sorry, one and a quarter inch strap. So, I'm simply from my center line going to draw a line, five eighths inch on either side. All right, there we go. Easy enough. 
Now, we need a transition from the sheath portion to our strap. So let's jump back over to our round punch. And let's do this. I usually eyeball this, but for the sake of the video, let's do this. I'm going to come up 5 eighths of an inch, make a line right across my handle. What that's going to do is give me a start and a stop point. Now, we're going to go with a little bit wider round corner here because I'm going to use a tool to punch this. I'm going to use a round end punch to punch this. But if we have to punch this by hand or have to cut this by hand, I don't want that to be a really tough inside curve. All right, so let's just give it a nice big round, round corner. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Nice shoulder, nice transition to our strap. So let's jump up to this. Now, with our strap, we're going to bend this back, and we actually know where to bend. So for right now, let's go ahead and cut this out. But before we do that, for right hand draw, this side up. There we go. Now, half of the confusion is gone. If we're left-handed, want a left-hand draw, just flip this right in the left, this side up. Easy enough. All right, so let's cut this out. All right, and on our, on our end, I am not going to be very good at cutting that freehand, but let's give it a shot anyway. There we go. Cool. All right, freehand. Now, let's just do this. If you're not good at freehanding, what you can do is just make a lot of small cuts, and then that'll give you a nice round corner. So you can do that if you need to, and we'll probably do that on our leather because we'll have some thickness there. Okay, now, for our rivet, for our straps, one rivet is pretty good, but what will happen is this can wag back and forth if I only have one rivet in there. So we're going to drop in two, but also two, and we've all seen this. With a cheaper sheath, we've got this strap way up here. So what happens is the knife works itself out before it reaches that strap. Not great. We've got exposed edge when we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up 5 eighths of an inch, save a little time, I measured that, 5 eighths of an inch so that we have a clean, tight, secure strap every time. Cool. All right, so 5 eighths of an inch. Luckily, that lands right where our round corner is. So let's go ahead and circle that. Let's bring in our square. We're going to make another mark 3 quarters of an inch above that simply for our second rivet. And you'll see we'll drop our strap in on our first. There's our second. Okay. Now we know where our fold line is, right at the top of our handle. So let's simply fold that back square it. There we go. And I'm going to use my pin just to punch a little bit harder. All right, there we go. That's where our corresponding rivet holes need to be for our, for our belt loop. All right, now that's a pretty good size belt loop. And I like that because say I want to drop this on a three or a two and a half inch wide gun belt or gun rig, that's going to fit right on snug, easy every time. All right, so this is ready to go. Let's jump over to our main face. Because right here, what we need to do, if we want to keep top grain out, think about it. This is going to be on my right hip, just like that. Okay, so top grain is out. I want top grain out here. So what I need to do is flop this. I can square that right on the edge of the paper for my throat. There we go. And let's trace this in. And there's our round end. Okay. Now, before we flip that, let's do this. Right side, this side up, and we're going to test that. Okay, so if this is folded like this on my right side, all right, top grain out, edge to the back, then I'm going to drop that in right there. So therefore, all right, everything looks good. All right, so confusion over. All I have to do is lay these markings up, cut that on my top grain, and that's set. All right, let's move to our next step, and this is our welt. What we want to do here is we could actually cut 3 8 inch straps and just glue those in. That's not really the best way to go. So let's take our face. Now I'm going to square that across the top. You know what? In fact, let's do this. Let's come down a quarter inch. I usually will add extra length when I cut, but for the sake of the video again, let's do this by pattern. So I'm going to run that off, and you'll see where I'm going with this. All right, so here's the outside. That's basically going to be where we cut to, okay? But what I want to do, A, I'm going to overcut this, and this does not have to be perfect. We just need enough room there 
to trim to our final size, actually using our face. And again, that too will make some sense here shortly. But let's just eyeball in an outside line there. Okay, let's go ahead and cut that. Okay, we've got that piece cut out. Now that's gonna be a little long and that's okay. We'll trim the throat. But let's do this. Let's lay this right on our edge. In fact, I tell you what, we're about a quarter inch up, so let's just bend that in about a quarter of an inch. And again, you'll see, we don't have to be spot on perfect here. In fact, we're gonna trim everything except the inside. We'll never see that. All right, so I'm gonna lay my pattern square on the edge of my, my table, and I'm gonna put my knife down. That way my, my blade or my guard can hang off of the table and I can get a really close drawing. We don't wanna cut this close. We want a little, a little room for movement in there, but let's know exactly where our blade is. All right, very cool. Now, like I said, we want a little play in here. So what I wanna do on this inside line, I'm going to cut out from that line just about an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch. There we go, that's gonna give our knife a little room. We don't want that too snug. All right, there we go. Okay, so there's our welt and we can bend those back out. All right, welt, easy enough. Now, like I said, we're gonna trim every bit of that. In fact, we won't even see any edge on this. Okay, so we've got our three pieces. Last step, we need our strap. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to glue this together and then we'll rivet this on, easy enough. But then I'll bring this over, actually mark the strap, drop in my snap, and then do that on the other side so we have a nice secure closure, fits perfectly. So therefore, the point I'm getting at is we just need a piece of strap about seven inches long by five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to cut that out. We're gonna use a line 20 snap here. So that's a perfect width for that. All right, let's trim that about seven. That gives us enough room too. We want a little extra room there outside of our snap for a tab. So let's write in five eighths inch by seven inches, and that gives us plenty of room. Well, very cool, our pattern is set and ready to go, clean and easy. So, follow me to chapter two. We're going to cut our leather, do a little edge work, and drop in some round-in punches.